civil versus criminal law. Civil law defines and enforces the duties or obligations of persons to one another. Criminal law, by contrast, defines and enforces the obligations of persons to society as a whole. Most non-lawyers experience criminal law in the media, but most lawyers practice civil law. Civil law doesn't involve guilt or punishment, two legal concepts with which you're probably the most familiar. Correct terminology is important. A court does not find a civil defendant guilty of negligence or breach of contract. It finds him or her, him or her liable for negligence or breach of contract. And lastly, there's cyber law, a growing body of law that deals specifically with issues raised by cyberspace transactions. Every type of law will be either civil or criminal, and either substantive or procedural, and either public or private. Substantive rules of law state the rights of the parties. Substantive law consists of all laws that define, describe, regulate, and create legal rights and obligations. Procedural law consists of all laws that establish and regulate the manner of enforcing or vindicating rights established by substantive law. Procedural rules govern the, con the conduct of legal proceedings. Your textbook will focus primarily on substantive law. Cyber law is traditional law basically applied in the online forum. Law and morality don't always go hand in hand. Actions may be legal, but immoral to some people. For example, many corporations dump as much toxic sludge into waterways as they are legally permitted to do, even though these limits can be very harmful to the environment and wildlife. Actions may be moral, but not required by the law. There are also many corporations who go out of their way to ensure that their industry is polluting as little as possible, even if this is at the expense of making a heftier profit. Actions may be required by both moral standards and the law. Every state has certain environmental standards that businesses must comply with in an effort to minimize environmental damage. What is law? That depends on which view you take. According to legal positivism, law is what the sovereign says it is. Decisions stand regardless of morality. Under natural law, an unjust law is no law at all and need not be obeyed. Laws must have a good moral basis. Under legal realism, enforcement of the law is more important than the law itself. Enforcers determine if the law is applied in a fair and consistent way. Natural law is a system of universal moral and ethical principles that are inherent in human nature and that people can discover by using their natural intelligence. For example, we all know that murder is wrong and parents are responsible for the acts of their minor, minor children. Natural law theory presupposes that positive law derives its legitimacy from natural law and holds that, to the extent that the natural law and positive law differ, natural law must prevail. In a letter that Martin Luther King Jr. wrote from jail in 1963, he stated, There are two types of laws, just and unjust laws. A just law is a man-made code that squares with the moral law. An unjust law is a code that is out of harmony with the moral law. An unjust law is a human law that is not rooted in eternal and natural law. At the first inaugural address in 1789, George Washington said, The foundation of our national policy will be laid in the pure and immutable principles of private morality. There is no truth more thoroughly established than that there exists in the economy and course of nature an indissoluble union between virtue and happiness. Some claim that the American legal system has taken us too far from Washington's ideal world. 
arguing that we place too many moral issues in the hands of judges and juries, that we allow government regulators to control too many matters. They argue that only by limiting the roles of government and the courts can we permit true morality to flourish. These critics would like to see most, if not all, federal regulatory agencies disbanded, permitting private morality once more to rule. Others strongly disagree, claiming that governmental regulation forces recalcitrant individuals and companies to follow the common morality, something they would not do unless faced with potential legal penalties. Would we be comfortable shopping if meat were not inspected? Should new drugs simply be tested on unwitting consumers rather than subjected to FDA review? Are race and sex discrimination so inconsequential that we can permit them to go unregulated? Should companies be free to dump toxic waste wherever they want? The answers, claim many, are too obvious to need stating. Here's a sample analysis to help you identify legal terminology and where you can find the information you need when you're reading future legal cases. We depend upon the law to give us a stable nation and economy, a fair society, a safe place to live and work. But while law is a vital tool for crafting the society we want, there are no easy answers about how to create it. Legal rules control us, yet we create them. Congratulations, you made it through the first chapter. Now it's time to go to Blackboard and get started on the first quiz, essay assignment, and discussion board questions.